Harry Mosley. Harry, are you there? I am. I'm here. Fantastic. All the way from New York. All the way from New York. What a great pleasure to have you with us. Terrific to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. So, Harry, if you're ready, the stage is all yours. Excellent, excellent. Yes, it's uh, it uh, certainly has been a very interesting 22 months, and uh, uh, let me uh, share some content about uh, Zoom. So, um, first off, uh, <clears throat> many people refer to Zoom uh, as a love story. Why do we say this? We say it's a love story because Eric Yuan, our CEO and founder, when he was a young man growing up in China, he used to spend 10 hours traveling on the train one way to go see his then girlfriend, now his wife. And all the time he used to say, there must be a better way to connect. Fast forward 1997, he joined WebEx. He ultimately became the head of all collaboration at Cisco WebEx. And in 2011, he decided that he wanted to found Zoom because the technology stack had changed. It was a mobile first world and uh, it was also a video first world. And when you fast forward from when he founded Zoom 10 years ago, uh, as of Q2, which was July 31st, 2021, we were 5,700 plus employees. We were 21 colos around the world. We had our first billion dollar quarter, 54% year on year growth, and our net promoter score of 66. Zoom is known for its firsts. We've been first in many different areas. We were first with things like, you know, uh, virtual backgrounds, video backgrounds, uh, PowerPoint as your, as your background, simultaneous multi-screen shares, 50,000 participants in a webinar. I mean, the list goes on, audio signatures on video files and things of that nature. And then we'll talk about some of the more innovative things that we've done recently, like smart gallery and um, video engagement centers and language translation in a moment, machine language translation. We need to go back to, quote, where we started. And when we do that, we have to take a look at our vision. Our vision is all about empowering people to accomplish more. And when you say that, what does that really mean? It means that when you take like medical practitioners, enabling medical practitioners to be able to see more patients so their patients can go on and have better lives. It means about empowering educators to educate our children so that they can go on and have fantastic careers. It means empowering investment bankers so they can work with their clients to build better companies and employ our children. And our purpose, our purpose is to create a virtual experience that is as good as, if not better than an in-person experience. And we have several examples of how we're doing that. We'll talk about smart gallery. We'll talk about persistent uh, whiteboarding with an infinite canvas and virtual reality and our Zoom events platform. When Zoom was founded 10 years ago, it was founded on five core principles. Ease of use. We have five-year-olds and we've got senior citizens. I was with a, uh, an individual um, at an event on Tuesday evening here in New York, and she was telling me how her 94-year-old father is a Zoom professional and uh, telling people and telling his friends how to use Zoom. So I think if you have five-year-olds and 94-year-olds using Zoom, that's clearly great evidence of ease of use. When we talk about reliability, we went through this mega growth from 10 million daily meeting participants to over 300 million daily meeting participants in April of last year, and uh, uh, all the time maintained this incredible reliability. Zoom is known for innovation, innovating at speed and scale. I talked about a bunch of our first, and I'll talk about some of the new features that we brought to market recently and are bringing to market that we're currently in beta testing with right now in a few moments. Um, but uh, that's, this is what we do, and we do it exceptionally well. Uh, price was another principle, and you know the way I characterize price uh, is it's about the price of a cup of coffee once a week. And uh, so that's retail. And then when you get into the enterprise, it goes down dramatically from there. 
and in privacy and security. We have some of the biggest brands in the world, financial services firms. We have eight of the top 10 US banks on our platform. We have over 50% uh, of the world's uh, largest banks on our platform. We have uh, great, great uh, security companies on our platform, great brands, every industry from retail through hospitality to healthcare companies, et cetera. So um, we are seen to be a private and secure company. We have um, our end-to-end -end encrypted service that now supports uh, a thousand uh, endpoints. Uh, as evidence of sort of this technology platform and its reliability and the complexity that goes behind it. And I thought it was kind of cool with the previous speaker talking about space. Uh, I want to run this video, which is, um, I believe, evidence of showing how all those principles come together. So this is a video of the astronauts at the International Space Station who were uh, ringing the bell and that was uh, streaming live from the International Space Station down to planet Earth. So um, I thought that was uh, pretty cool. Uh, in terms of, you know, sort of where is Zoom today? You know, we Zoom has a full communications a full unified communicate is a full unified communications platform. We're known for our meetings. That's where we started, but we have our Zoom phone platform, which I'll talk about in a moment. We have our developer platform where people can actually take the elements, the components of Zoom, our audio components, our video components, chat components, all of the components of the Zoom platform, and actually embed it into their proprietary technology and solutions. And um, we are doing that in healthcare, we're doing that in financial services, we're doing that in education and a variety of other industries. Uh, we also support the Zoom for Home model. We have our Zoom events platform where you can run you know, a short session, a one-day session, a multi-day session, a multi-track session, we take care of the technology, we take care of the ticketing, we take care of the calendaring. We, if you want to charge for your events, we'll actually do all that administration for you and you take care of the content. And then we have our Zoom app marketplace, which we'll talk about in a moment. This is all about taking uh, apps and having them embedded into Zoom to create this true, um, uh, seamless and frictionless experience. We have our webinar platform and Zoom rooms for uh, meetings, etc., and then the Zoom chat platform as well. A completely industry agnostic platform. We service all industries, and I've mentioned uh, several on here. Um, so, uh, including uh, governments around the world, when President Biden swore in the governors of the U.S. He did that on the on the Zoom platform. One of our clients uh, came to us um, uh, in April of last year and said, "We just had a executive management meeting, and uh, we've decided that we're going to have the entire firm go virtual as of Monday morning." And we have one question: Can Zoom support us? And our response was, "What time Monday morning?" And if you fast, then we fast forwarded to the following Friday and having the same conversation with the same people, the conversation went something like the following. If you had told us three months ago that you could migrate 180,000 professionals to Zoom over the course of five business days, at best, we might have laughed. And uh, that's what you did. And we wanted to thank you uh, very much for, for that effort. In terms of Zoom apps, uh, um, as I said before, this is about taking apps and embedding them into the Zoom application. Uh, and so why don't I run a short video that shows you what that's all about. And now, I'm excited to share what's in store for Zoom apps. 
beyond the question of the Mac or the PC, in the future, you'll be able to use Zoom apps on your phone or your tablet. With apps like DocuSign, where you can sign together anywhere, your workflows just got easier. Watch for new engaging mobile experiences with Zoom apps, as well as Zoom apps for Zoom Rooms for Touch. Next, we'll be expanding the experience of Zoom apps to Zoom webinars. Zoom apps like Mentimeter and Poly make it easier to increase audience engagement. Large group interactive experiences will create social spaces in Zoom events that everyone will want to participate in. Zoom apps is more than just running your favorite apps in Zoom. I'm excited to share how we are enabling immersive apps, a video first innovation that puts people into apps and enables developer partners to create immersive and collaborative experiences. Soon a meeting host can just click collaborate to engage a team in a Google Workspace document. Like screen sharing, it focuses the view of every meeting participant, but in an interactive app. And people are immersed in the collaborative experience, so you can read the room and more. You can see how your favorite productivity apps are instantly becoming more engaging as immersive apps. And soon you'll see Zoom apps from Box and Dropbox and others come alive in collaborate mode. And with the new Zoom apps for Microsoft products, soon you'll be able to access your files from SharePoint and collaborate on Office documents right in Zoom meetings. And we introduced, as I said before, our Zoom events platform earlier this year. Um, and we actually hosted our annual user conference with tens of thousands of people uh, participating on this platform. Uh, so you could actually sort of see what was happening in different events. Uh, you have a sort of consolidated dashboard uh, providing all of the metrics around your events, which is part of the whole administration platform for, for Zoom. And as I said, uh, uh, ticketing and things like that. One of the things I really like about our Zoom event platform is that uh, it actually improves the experience over an in-person event. Because if you imagine in the in-person event, if you step outside of the main keynote presentation, you have no idea what's going on. Whereas here, if I see somebody in the virtual environment that I want to connect to, I can actually connect to that person. I can actually have a video meeting with that person in the event and still see and hear what's going on on the main stage. So it's, uh, that's uh, pretty cool. In the virtual world, uh, we've experienced the fact that uh, it's a what we characterize as the democratization of meeting meetings where everybody's head is the same size, everybody's occupying the same amount of screen real estate. It's a very inclusive environment. It's very collaborative. There's a lot of equality in this environment. And the challenge, of course, is now that we're going back to a hybrid world where you're going to have some people in the office some of the time and the rest of the people working from anywhere, not necessarily home. How do you maintain that equality? How do you maintain that, um, that uh, inclusivity uh, when you have a distributed workforce like this? How do you ensure that the people who are, quote, not in the room, not in the room don't feel disenfranchised? And so, um, this video shows you how we're leveraging artificial intelligence uh, to ensure that this is not the case. Organizations have embraced hybrid work. How do you ensure that on-site and remote workers can feel included and can participate equally when meeting and collaborating? To create a space where employees can collaborate and engage more naturally, meeting spaces must better support the needs of remote participants. That's why we created Zoom Room Smart Gallery in collaboration with our hardware partners. Powered by AI on Zoom Room software and devices, the Smart Gallery feature creates individual video feeds of in-room participants, so they are seen more clearly by remote attendees. Meeting participants can move around the room and gesture naturally, as the camera technology will follow them to create that in-the-room feel. Smart Gallery adapts as people enter and leave the room, so there's no need for someone to manage the room settings or tend to the camera. 
This technology will also process the audio conversation to highlight the right person speaking. And multiple cameras can be utilized to scale to fit larger spaces, giving remote participants additional perspectives so they can be a part of the collaboration wherever it is happening in the room. AI will even analyze these multiple video streams to identify the optimal angle to display participants for a seamless hybrid meeting experience. Transform your conference room into a collaboration space with Zoom Room Smart Gallery. And so the, and so the question is, where are we going from here? At our annual user conference, we announced uh, a bunch of uh, new features, new capabilities, like live translation and transcription, which I'll show you in a moment, and our persistent whiteboarding. Um, so uh, the idea of language transcription is again, promoting equality, promoting inclusivity, and helping to make the world a little smaller. So this is how it's going to work. Hi, it's a pleasure to be joining you from Germany. Hi, we have people watching our presentation from all over the world. It's very exciting that people who speak other languages like Japanese, Chinese, Portuguese, or Korean can now understand us. This will make communication much easier. Yes, that's why we are thrilled to be part of the Zoom family. We're working hard to support transcription and translation in many languages. This makes the world just a little bit smaller and our team more productive. Alex, can you tell me something about the technology that makes this work? Natürlich. Das System basiert auf künstlicher Intelligenz. Wir kombinieren dabei automatische Spracherkennung und maschinelle Übersetzung. Die englische Sprache wird erst von der automatischen Spracherkennung transkribiert, dann wird dieser englische Text von der maschinellen Übersetzung in die anderen Sprachen übersetzt. That's great. We're excited to have you join us and welcome once again to Zoom. So our objective. Our objective around language translation is to launch this in the early part of 2022 for uh, quite a number of languages. So that's, uh, that's going to be terrific. And then we have our video engagement center. Um, uh, video engagement. So video is the new voice. The whole world really understands that video is the new voice. Being able to see people, hear people, read those nonverbal cues. Video Engagement Center is all about um, being able to connect to a subject matter expert uh, in, a, in a store or wherever, for that matter, you can do it in the virtual world as well. And so here's an example of how that would look. Let's start with the physical scenario. As organizations are returning to varying degrees of hybrid work, many are grappling with talent shortages and providing a safe environment for staff. Through kiosks like this one, you can route and connect to experts located anywhere via video. This could be used for customers at brick and mortar stores or even internally for locations like your main lobby. For example, I'm at a local hardware store and I want to know if the tile that I'm looking at can be ordered in a specific color. Rather than staffing the store to support questions like this locally, a retailer can use a centralized pool of resources shared across locations. Now, with Video Engagement Center, the retailer only has the staff for the most essential on-site roles. So, um, uh, and also you can, you, we have clients who are using this capability for technology centers. So people, employees in their offices can actually walk up to an engagement center and get technology help as well. Uh, of all the, you know, these are all really exciting new features and new capabilities that we're bringing to the Zoom platform. But the persistent whiteboarding, the sort of infinite canvas augmented with virtual reality is, um, I think, sort of one of the most uh, advanced um, elements of our platform because of uh, bringing people together, collaborating, whiteboarding, uh, whiteboarding has always been sort of really uh, core to every organization, whether you're in marketing, whether you're in finance, whether you're in technology, etc. Uh, and uh, so super excited about launching this new platform.
An idea can start anywhere. But ideas become something bigger when collaboration happens. Zoom Room's whiteboarding solutions allow you to collaborate in real time and continue the project after meeting with your colleagues. It's easy for people anywhere to contribute to the same project, like escalating a call to a Zoom Room. Collaborate with innovative features that make it simple for hybrid teams to interact in new ways, like using your tablet in companion mode. The easy to share and easy to access persistent whiteboard means you can pick up right where you left off. Collaborate together in a Zoom room for touch. Add sticky notes, images, and annotations where needed. Or you can fully contribute to projects on Zoom whiteboard, on your laptop, your mobile device, in different locations. The in-room Zoom for Touch whiteboard works as an extension of your virtual canvas, allowing groups of people to work on the same project together. And because Zoom whiteboard's infinite canvas is virtual, users will be able to interact through a range of devices, including exciting new experiences. So we're teaming up with uh, Oculus from Meta to uh, um, increase the immersive experience from the persistent whiteboarding. And uh, this is a, a demonstration Welcome of how that Welcome to our offices in San Jose. Today we'll show you how this new Zoom and Workrooms integration may work to interact seamlessly together, even though we can be anywhere in the world. I'm here in the real world while Jamonique, Mike, and his colleague Yushi, who is all the way in London, are already together in VR using Workrooms. Hey everybody. Hey Jordan. Hi Jordan. It's great to see you all in VR. I'm dialing in for my Zoom Rooms touch board. It feels like I've joined a real meeting room where you're all sitting together. Wow, it really feels like we're in the same room together. And my avatar hands move in VR just like my real hands move as I talk. And because Workrooms is a mixed reality experience, my virtual desk in Workrooms maps to my physical desk. And I can see my computer screen and my keyboard in front of me just as they are on my physical desk. That's awesome. All right, shall we try out a prototype of what Zoom whiteboard might look like in Workrooms? Cool. Yeah, let's do, let's do it. Let me open up a whiteboard from my Zoom dashboard. You can see that I can draw freehand using different colors for some rough ideation. I can also create shapes and add different connectors to them to create some flow diagrams. I can also add some sticky notes. And lastly, I'll tag Mike in the comment so he knows where I need some input from him. I can also write on the same whiteboard as Jordan from here. I just flip my controller to use it like a pen to write directly on my real desk. You know what? I think I need a bigger whiteboard. Let me go to the front of the room. That's better. Cool. I'll join you up there. So now it feels like we're working on a big version of the same whiteboard as Jordan in the real world and collaborating on a project together. So I can just add a note here and it'll show up for Jordan just the same. We also envision that you will be able to save the whiteboard and share it with others using email or chat. It's all pretty cool stuff. So when you take all these different elements, whether it's the persistent whiteboarding together with language translation, together with smart gallery, you know, these are really sort of very powerful elements that when put together, it's not the, it, it becomes a exponential uh, in terms of the feature function value proposition. So I want to uh, thank you for, um, uh, for the time and the attention and uh, I'm happy to take some questions if that's, uh, if, that's uh, if the organizers are open to doing that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Harry. That was that was great. Some really cool things there. Um, interesting to see, especially the virtual reality effects that could be the way we're doing our meetings in the future. So that was fun. Thanks very much, Harry. Uh, we do have some questions for you. But before that, I just wanted to share a couple of my own reflections. I'm actually a heavy Zoom user. I'm a university lecturer. I teach MBAs in one of the leading universities here in Spain and also in companies. I teach uh, storytelling. And I was an early adopter of Zoom and I started transitioning to doing my lectures this way, of course, during the pandemic. And a couple of things I noticed, first of all, that doing your 
your lectures or your sessions or workshops using Zoom is so much more democratic. That's the first thing. I found that doing Absolutely. them physically, of course, you always pay much more attention to the people in the front, the front two or three rows, the people at the back. I mean, they, they, you've no idea who they are sometimes. <laughs> but in a Zoom session, it's totally different, isn't it? Everyone is there, they're the same distance. You feel so much yeah. closer to people in a way, even though you're further away physically, you are closer in some senses. And also people feel less intimidated to participate, don't they? Because raising your hand in a physical session can be a little bit uh, difficult for some people, but it's so much easier just to chat and to interact in that way. So that's the first observation that I found doing things so with I, Zoom is very democratic. So I got to tell you, I was at a dinner last night in the city and um, sitting next to um, this individual, John, and John was telling me about his eight-year-old and 10-year-old children who were being Zoomed. Uh, you know, they, they were home from school, obviously, and they were on Zoom. And he said it was really interesting for him how they were, pre-pandemic, they were really shy. Mm. But, you know, sort of in Zoom allowed them to be much more expressive and yep. much more extroverted. And he said it changed his children. And now they're back in school, their, 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 their ability to participate, they don't feel as inhibited as they did before. He said, it's, it's fantastic. It's like how it changed his children. And you're absolutely right. It, it, you know, it works for introverts and it works for extroverts. Um, and that's why we refer to it as the democratization of meetings. We should say it's the democratization of everything. So. Yep, yeah, well, that's, that's certainly been my experience. Well, my second, my second reflection for you is that when I've taken my existing content the way that I'm used to delivering in a physical sense, uh, if I try and replicate that in a Zoom session, it doesn't really work that well. But if I reinvent that content and I take advantage of the features that you have within this software, the breakout rooms, the whiteboard, the chat, the interactive polling, well, you know better than I do, then, then you get an experience which in many ways is, is superior. So in some ways, I'm reluctant to go back to the physical world. I'd be quite happy to stay where we are right now. Yeah, that's an excellent point. And, um, you know, when, when I talk to enterprises around the world um, uh, in every industry, you know, what's become really apparent is uh, the following. If the, if the pandemic had sort of been over in you know, a f you know, few weeks or a few months as originally predicted early in 2020, then, you know, the world would have just flipped back to the way we'd operated before. Uh, as an example, I used to be on flights three or four times a week, mm. uh, you know, sort of uh, going around the world. I, you know, I, I went one and a half times around the world in 10 days. And uh, so, but I haven't been on a plane since like February the 25th, March 2020. Uh, you know, where, where we're going to go from here is uh, very different. You know, I at best will be on, you know, sort of three or four flights a week, uh, sorry, a month uh, in the future. And the point of raising this is that we, what we have learned over the last 22 months is how we can develop relationships how we can deliver value in a virtual environment. Uh, and so in the past, you know, sort of from a business perspective, we led by in-person meetings, and then we would augment that with video, with virtual experiences. The future is we're going to lead with virtual experiences because everybody sees how productive it is, how efficient it is, how effective it is, how less stressful it is, how it, um, uh, you know, reduces the wear and tear on our bodies, mm. and we will augment that with in-person experiences. Yep. So it's a complete reversal. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's move on to some of the questions that we have for you because we don't have that much time. Um, you outlined some of the key values for Zoom, and this question is related to the culture of Zoom as as a company. Obviously, you've exploded in terms of revenue, in terms of employees over the last year. And uh, I don't know if this is true, but I read that you hired one third of your workforce remotely. And if that's the case, I suspect that a large number of your employees have never even met one another physically. So how, how have you preserved 
the Zoom culture? How does the, how has this affected you, and how are you maintaining it going forward? It sounds like a real challenge. It's exhausting. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, so that's uh, that's actually uh, that statistic you quoted is inaccurate. Um, so I'll give you the accurate one. Uh, this is in the public domain. So uh, as of January thirty uh, first, twenty twenty, we were twenty five hundred plus employees. Uh, and as of July 31st, 2021, so 18 months later, we were north of 5,700 employees. Mm. So if you do the math on that, um, you know, we hired over half the company during the pandemic. Wow. And uh, so that's, you know, pretty dramatic. Uh, so maintaining culture is super important. It's super important to the leadership team. It's super important to us as a company. And uh, I think maintaining culture in every organization uh, is uh, clearly a critical element. It, you know, during the pandemic, um, you know, every time I get on a Zoom meeting, it's sort of like I feel like sort of new faces are popping up. But it's uh, it's kind of interesting, sort of how easy it has become to develop relationships, uh, business relationships with colleagues around the world, whether they're you know, in Europe, whether they're, you know, in California, etc. Um, you know, when, I, when, when we get on a call and there's a new person there, they typically introduce themselves, you know, uh, as an executive, I'll ask them, you know, what their background is and sort of share with the group. And so, so through sort of through natural um, experiences and natural meetings, you know, the New, the, the new the, the new zoomies um, get to know their colleagues and we sort of like we'll have a, a short preamble in terms of uh, who the who the new person is and introduce ourselves and then we do um, we do a lot of fun things we have yoga classes and we have you know a variety of different coffee breaks and we bring different speakers in to to talk to the organization we do uh, all hands meetings every two weeks. We do it uh, two different time zones to sort of facilitate our people around the planet. Then everything is recorded and uh, available for playback. So um, uh, we push quite hard on this and we take it uh, super seriously. So uh, Harry, we are almost out of time. Uh, we are encroaching into lunchtime, which in Spain is a very dangerous thing to do. I don't want to leave my children as orphans. So uh, I'm going to have to draw this to a close. Harry Mosley, CIO of Zoom. Thank you so much indeed for your time. Wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. A pleasure to be here. And of course, if we can uh, at Zoom, if I or anybody at Zoom can do anything for you or any member of the audience, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. It's really simple. It's harry.mosley at zoom.us. So, Please feel right. free to connect with me. I'm happy to help in any way we can. Prepare to be inundated. Thank you, thank you so much, Harry. I'm ready for it. Okay, okay. thank you guys.